Today's our final episode at Leon. But before we have the vote, don't go and skip to the end or go and vote yet. Make sure you watch the full video because we'll go through the cup final here with Leon against PSG. Then we'll show you all of the squads and formations and scenarios at each of the clubs that are on the vote. And from there, you'll be able to make an educated choice as to which club you would like me to move to. Uh, as ever, if there are multiple clubs on the vote, which there should be, feel free to vote for as many as you like. Rather than just voting for one, you can vote for four of however many are there, if there are even four that come in for me. Uh, we'll wait and see in due course. They've had seven or eight teams on uh, the previous few votes. So there should be a number of sides that are available to you. But like I say, wait. Don't go and vote yet. Make sure you watch the full video. Let's try and win the Coupe de France first here with Leon against Paris Saint-Germain. Then, of course, we'll go through each of the clubs individually and you'll be able to see who is potentially the best fit for me as a player. It might not just be the situation of being like, oh, I hope he plays for Real Madrid because scenarios at different clubs will be different at this stage of a save. So as we push towards the end of season five, then we have so far this season scored more goals than we have done at any other club ever. And with the opportunity to score yet more here in the Coupe de France. We hope to win the French Cup. We got no trophy season one. Season two in Denmark, we won the league and the cup. Season three in uh, the Netherlands at PSV, we won the league, but not the cup. Season four at Newcastle, we didn't get any trophies, nor a golden boot. And season five, we've got the golden boot in Liga, scored more goals in all competitions than we have done in any season so far, and might win the cup. You can see uh, Paris Saint Germain's lineup on the right hand side there Donnarumma, Mendes, Carmo, Romero, uh, Fafana, Mukiele, Rice, Elmas, Buendia, and Bappe, Oyarthabal. It's better than the side they've got in season five in the Glory Hunter save. Certainly, much better. And they beat us by two goals to one last time we played them. Hopefully, though, we can get victory this time around. Here we go. Cup final time in the Coupe de France. Objectives for the Coupe de France final. We'll go for the dribble success rate because it's probably the only one we stand a chance of getting. Rather frustratingly, uh, the Cup final is at the Parc de France. So PSG effectively at home. However, of course unlike a regular home league match, we'll have 50% of the capacity as opposed to 95% of the capacity for a regular home game for Paris Saint-Germain. We hope that we can battle hard here in this game and try our best to win the cup. We prayed that Auxerre were the side that beat PSG and we weren't going to end up with them when we saw the semi-final draw. But unfortunately, Paris Saint-Germain are by a long way, the best side in France in this save. We gave them a good run for their money last time we played them. And if we can at least be competitive this time around, I'd be very happy. However, they do have him. 1-0 PSG, Mbappe. Didn't get the golden boot though, did you, pal? Here's Emi Wendia in the box of Paris Saint-Germain. Pulls it back. Good block. Vital block. I'll try to get to this. I don't think I'm going to get there in time. Well, I've put Romero under pressure. And the fans are calling for a foul. And apparently I was fouled. Or he used a hand. I'm not sure which. That's dinked towards me. I've nodded it down nicely to Fratesi. And maybe we can do something in this game against Paris Saint-Germain. He's going to take the best performance we've put together all season to get it, I think. We have had some very good performances this season in multiple different competitions, but to beat PSG, we're going to have to be at our absolute best. 15 minutes in, that's our first attempted attack, and we've not come close to testing the goalkeeper. Elmas intercepts that from Gallardo. Buendia is in the box. Is Elmas again. Mbappe, I'm sure, was offside there. Well, he certainly was really poorly marked. You can't leave the best striker in the world on his own like that. That's insane. Played in behind me. Try and do a bit of a solo run like we did in the last game of yesterday's episode, but I wasn't able to find the pass I wanted. Actually wanted to find the man in the middle, not the man out wide there. 
with a slotted through ball. It didn't quite come as I'd anticipated it. Buendia in here to Elmas, who's gone solo. Doesn't use Ayathabal, who was available as a squared option. And Paris Saint-Germain lead by two in an entirely predictable result so far. Stefan on to me. Go out wide. And we'll find Gavi, who's playing on the right-hand side of the front three today, which is the first time I think he's played there at all for us. Strong challenge from David Carmo. No card, however, from the referee for him. We'll give this to Gavi. And we'll see if maybe we can get one back before half-time. Significantly before half-time, actually. Only the 32nd minute. It's up, it's in, it's away by the man that gave us the foul in the bloody first place. And Mbappe brings it down. But the other will break. I can't get there. <laughs> I tried to, to lunge, but my legs certainly aren't long enough for that. Now, here they come on the counter-attack. Nori Mukiele, forward from right wing-back, into Emi Buendia. And there's Mbupi, and it's wide on his left foot. The chance for three to seal it, even at this early stage, not able to be taken. Taking the time here, Piers, you know, which they can afford to do. Five minutes before half-time, Mbappe into Ayartha Bell. Declan Rice, Mbappe, Ayartha Bell. Oh, they're linking up just brilliantly. That's the sort of calibre of football we can't get to. We can't reach that sort of level regularly. We've done it on occasion this season. And uh, to be fair, at each of our clubs, on occasion, we've played football like that. But PSG are playing that sort of football every time we play them consistently. And that's the difference between where we are in our career and where players like Mbappe are in theirs. Who am I up against here? Christian Romero. Well, I didn't necessarily fancy myself for, for pace, but we will never know in the minute. 2-0 down at half-time. We'll try and turn it round, but don't hold your breath. Corner for PSG. Nine minutes into the second half. Buendia takes it short. And Ayathabel finds David Carmo, who finds Mbappe, who couldn't have come much closer to sealing the game at three. That cannon's down off the woodwork. And Fofana's handballed that, thankfully, for us. That's a let-off. Now, is that going to spark the revival from us? I hope so. I don't anticipate it, but it, it would be nice to at least do something positive offensively in this game. He says, as he delays with his pass, so much so that he gets tackled. I've not necessarily done anything positive in an offensive nature so far in this game, but to score in a cup final would be great. To even just take a first bloody touch in the situation like that would be great. Why is my guy just run past the ball? What's that all about? We've won it back. Oh, it's going to skew for Mbappe, because of course it is. Back to Emi Buendia. I'm getting a little bit salty here, aren't I? Buendia to Mbappe. It's just because it's PSG. He's offside, surely, there, he asked about. He's got to be off. No, he's on. He's on. Goal given. He's got to be off. Surely that's offside. When he plays the ball there. No, he's on. It's Lomami at the back post who plays him on. Sick. 3-0 PSG. I think that's going to be the end of our cup campaign. At least we made it to the final, eh? That's a nice ball by Gallardo. Seen off one. Oh, of course they got 92 rated goalkeeper. Fofana picking up a yellow card for something. Oh, it was for his intent. Oh, he took me out after I had the shot. Are we going to get a pen then? We are going to get a pen. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I'll take it though. To make it 3-1 from the spot. We do indeed. Well, I've scored in the cup final at least. We lead by three goals to one. Yeah, oh, sorry. We trail by three goals to one. I did, if I'm honest, actually aim that to the top left corner. So I'm kind of glad it hasn't gone where I thought I was aiming it. Otherwise, keeper would have saved it. Mugiele forward here for PSG. Trying to get their three-goal advantage back. Not left many men back here. They probably don't need to. That beat the keeper. And Longley with a clearance twice. Jeffrey and Adelaide are called for the lobbed ball. It's not really what I was after. I would have lobbed through ball. Fratesi, I think, won that head. I'm trying to get there. Fafana's turn well. I've won it off him. Oh, but we're not going to win it back. 14 minutes to go. 
Still Paris Saint-Germain press. Cody Gakpo's off the bench now for them. Mbappe inside to Arthur Bell. There is game over. It might have been a close fixture last time we played them in the league, but this has been far from it. PSG 4, Lyon 1. And, uh, well, it would as good as it might be to play for PSG to try and stand the chance of winning leagues and cup competitions the way that they have done, I can't really justify starting myself ahead of Kylian Mbappe, can I? So I don't think we'll be signing for Paris Saint-Germain in the summer. And if they do bid for me, I just won't put it on the vote because, I mean, why would they pick me over Kylian Mbappe? It's just not going to happen, is it? But they're going to win by at least four goals to one in this cup final. Hey, yay, yay. Oh, no, we could make it 4 2. We're getting forward well here. Reina Adelaide to me. Lay that off to Gavi. Could come back to me. No, he's kicked it straight against the defender. It'll be 4 1. Well, in Herberto. Not that it stopped Cody Gakpo getting it. By Arthur Bell. Mbappe. Gakpo to Mbappe again. Here's Mukiele forward from right wing back. And Killian Mbappe. Nice block by Herberto. Cherky to me. Come again, Ryan. Come again. Play him in. Has he got the legs to get there? No. Fafana does well. We're going to lose the cup final. It was probably the tallest of all us to have tried or expected to uh, get a victory nonetheless. Congratulations, Paris Saint-Germain. That is the level we aspire to play at. As Ronaldinho has got his uh, face held up there on a the flag in the stands. Mbappe with one. Oyarthabal with two. And Elmas with one in the middle. We get a consolation goal from the spot, so I remain the top goal scorer in this competition, I believe, with five all told. But they had 15 shots in that game compared to our two. It's no surprise, oh, my voice is going, it's no surprise that PSG won that game. We were hoping, and unfortunately it didn't work. The activity is defeat in the derby. Um, we'll support each other. I did get player of the month for the most recent month which is great now before we head for the vote i'll give you a full season roundup of everything that happened in this save so we have an idea of who we might be going to initially with regards champions league clubs for next season i win the Liga golden boots with 42 goals in 38 games uh, i come fifth in the assist charts as well with nine gavi gets 18 politano 14 and I'm their fifth on that list. Clean sheet wise, Lopez got 11. So a decent performance from him. Uh, with regards, uh, top goal scorers in. If it'll change the Coupe Nationale. Ayathabal came up to four with his brace in the final. So I did need that goal from the spot to get the, to get the uh, top goal scorer accolade in that competition. Tolisso with three on our way through. In the UEFA Super Cup, uh, that's not really neither here nor there. Uh, I wasn't involved in the Champions League more so than the... Uh, qualification rounds however we did end up top goal scorer in the Europa League with 14 goals in 10 games uh, that's European qualifiers frustrated that we've not been selected for England recently as well very frustrated at that but uh, out of my control unfortunately so uh, we'll have a look actually at the standings for the competitions we were involved in this year so the Liga table looked like that Paris Saint-Germain won it Monaco and Stade Rene there on 77 points. Ourselves fourth on 74, relegated. Where Angers, Lorient, Toulouse and Bordeaux. Uh, it doesn't actually show the relegation playoff. So I presume Bordeaux did go down. Obviously, you know what the Coupe Nationale final was. The UEFA Super Cup was won by Bayer. Leverkusen by three goals to two over Atletico Madrid. Champions League winners, Atletico Madrid by two goals to one in a Madrid derby against Real. The Europa League was won by Leipzig by two goals to one. So our... Uh, opponents that beat us in the quarterfinals went on to then win 8-2 uh, against Elas Verona in the semis and then win the final 2-1 against Manchester United. So Leipzig will be Champions League next year regardless of whether they finished top four or not in Germany. And Eintracht Frankfurt win the UEFA Europa Conference League as well. So they'll be Europa League regardless of where they finished in the league last year, this year, unless they finish top four, of course, in which case they'll be Champions League and that spot will go elsewhere. So in other major leagues around uh, Europe this season. So potential Champions League, either opponents or sides we might come up, might be playing for. Chelsea, Manchester United, Manchester City and Spurs. Although as we progress, depending on who comes in for us, we might have to reload the save. So that may change. But as it stands in this save right now, Chelsea, United, City and Spurs. Leicester in fifth, Liverpool only seventh. 
Arsenal only 13th, but as we saw a couple of seasons ago, Arsenal do not have a great squad and evidently it's not improved since then. Southampton, Crystal Palace and Fulham relegated. Promoted to the Premier League, Leeds United and Sheffield United, alongside one of Watford, Norwich, Huddersfield or Hull. Uh, relegated from the Championship, Blackpool, Ipswich and Coventry in League One. Swansea City and MK Dons promoted to the Championship alongside one of Barnsley, Bolton, Bradford and Portsmouth. Cambridge, I think, still in League One in the save, are they? No. Exeter, Burton, Albion, Port Vale and Wickham relegated. Cambridge will be in League One next year after promotion by finishing third alongside Northampton and Cheltenham in one of Forest Green, Crew, Swindon and Lake Norient promoted back to League One. Mansfield and Stevenage would have been relegated should it have been uh, that there is the National League on the game. St Etienne, Ken, Paris FC and Ajaxio coming up from League 2, but we're leaving, of course. In the Bundesliga, Leipzig won the league by goal difference. They scored 102 goals. Christ! Leipzig, Dortmund, Leverkusen and Bayern only fourth. Frankfurt and Mutsen Gladbach uh, also in Europe next season. In fact, Frankfurt won the Europa League, didn't they? So they'll be in the Champions League next year. Or no, it was Leipzig that won the Europa League. And they'll be Champions League next year. But they've won the league. So that Champions League spot does go to Frankfurt. So Frankfurt will be Champions League next year. Mucin Gladbach in the Europa League. Uh, in Italy, uh, Juventus win the league. Atalanta second, Milan third and Napoli fourth. Then Inter and Monza sit. Congratulations to them. Uh, certainly would consider going to Juventus or AC Milan, that's for sure. I don't really want to go to an unlicensed team if we can avoid it, really. In La Liga, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atleti and Valencia in the Champions League next year. Atleti Club de Bilbao and Getafe in fifth and sixth, respectively. So then, I will ask... Actually, let's show you my career thus far. So all told this season... I'll do it from the squad hub initially, just for this season here at Lyon. Um, 62 goals scored in 57 games and 19 assists. One goal and one assist in the Champions League. 42 goals and 9 assists in League 1. Uh, so 51 goal contributions in 38 games. 14 goals and 6 assists in 10 Europa League games. 20 contributions in 10 games. That's outrageous. Certainly our best competition this year. And then the Coupe Nationale, the Coupe de France. Five goals and three assists in five games. All told, 62 goals and 19 assists in all comps. To show you how the rest of my teammates did actually quickly. Uh, Gavi with 13 goals and 25 assists. Tolisso, 11 goals and 9. Politano, 10 goals and 16 assists. Very good for an ageing 33-year-old in, in the late 70s and declining. Turkey, 10 and 8, although a number of those were substitute appearances. 8 and 10 the other way around for Ada Adelaide. Fratrezi came in and got 5 goals and 10 assists in all competitions for us this season. So it took him a little while to get going, but once he got going, he was decent. So for my career all told then, I have 199 goals in my career so far. In 245 games played, 136 wins, 40 draws, 69 defeats, 79 assists as well. My next goal will be my landmark 200th. I've only got three yellow cards in my career so far, and it was, without shadow of doubt, my best goal-scoring uh, season so far. 62 goals this year compared to my 24 at Newcastle, my 39 at PSV, my 40 at Copenhagen, and my 33 at Cambridge United. 19 assists at Cambridge was previously the most assists I'd gotten in a season, I think. Oh no, 24 at PSV. Bloody hell. So, still though, our best goal scoring and goal contribution season so far in the save. 85 rated. I will go to my actions and ask to be put on the transfer list. Right, I'm going to cut for you guys here now. We're probably going to spend half an hour to an hour trying to figure out where we're going to go. But for you guys, it'll be about a second. See you in a sec. What's been about a second for you has been about an hour and a bit for me and my Twitch chat as we go through and have a look at all of the options. The vote has been amassed and uh, forgive me if I'm a little bit distracted, I do have the kitten on my lap. Uh, we have amassed a vote of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven potential teams for you. Now it was initially my intention to only have Champions League teams on the list, but 
there have been some interesting Europa League options come up as well. So I've added them to the list too. And it goes without saying, some of those Europa League options are quite good. So I, I don't necessarily have now a preference between Champions League or Europa League. I'd rather just go to a good team with a good squad. So starting then, our first option is as follows. First option is Leicester City, probably the weakest of those on the list, but they were the first team to come in for me, so they are here nonetheless. They paid a whacking £117.5 million to bring me to the club. And for those that uh, are fussed about that sort of thing, I'm being paid £140,000 a week here at Leicester City. The squad is not bad. I would be first choice ahead of Boulay Dia. 100% first choice, not a problem. No questions asked about that. They play a 4-1-4-1, which is slightly defensive. I would be, uh, of course, up top first team in that. And they play in the Europa League. So highest, play, highest rated player is a 35-year-old Edouard Mendy. Then there's two 85 rated right backs in Gusto and Dest. Myself, Lukeba, Aaron Barry, Coop Mainers, Nauf, Ginter, and then Dia, my strike, uh, I say partner, but strike rival, I guess. So Mendy would start. Left back, they have 76 rated Kufre and 69 rated Mendoza, so not strong there. Centre back is Lukeba and Ginter at 33, 83 rated, and then Romagnoli and Amate. So good enough, perhaps. Right back, obviously, Gusto and Dest. Uh, then in the 4-1-4-1, so Coop Mainers would hold, probably. Then it would be 82-rated Dahoud with 80-rated uh, Dewsbury Hall, probably. Then on the right-hand side would be 83-rated Nauf, although it might be left because Bowen could play on the right and Nauf does have left mid in his positions. And then up top would obviously be myself. Leicester City, Europa League, 4-1-4-1. First choice, that is option one. Again, a reminder, please wait until you've seen all of the options before voting. Your second option would be a team we've managed in Glory Hunter, but have never played with in a My Player save, I think, ever. We've not been to the Bundesliga in this save yet either. 118.2 million pounds Borussia Dortmund have paid for me, so a slightly higher transfer fee, however, significantly lower wages. It's actually a pay cut. I'm on 110 grand at Lyon. It would be a wage cut to 87,000 pounds a week to come to Borussia Dortmund if you're bothered about that sort of thing. The squad, they play a 4-2-3-1. They're in the Champions League and I would be first slash second choice. You can see that Karim Adeyemi's 87 and obviously higher rated than me. But we can justify with our goal scoring history in this save starting ahead of a player that's a couple of ratings higher. So I, that's why I put first slash second choice on the vote. With regards higher rated players, they have quite a strong squad. Although, as you see there, a number in similar positions. So Kubel would start in goal, still 88 rated. They play at 4-2-3-1. So at left back, their only left back would be Santiago Riveros, 83 rated. At centre back would be Nicolas Sula and Joao Victor with Nathan Collins as backup. Right back would be Joao Mario with Juan Bissaka as backup. They have a number of right backs, so maybe one of them could play left back. Not sure. Uh, in the two holding roles, they have Hoybier 85 and Erzcan 83. That's it. No centre mids at the club whatsoever. Mason Mount is their probable go to Cam at 87. So they are slightly light in central midfield. Uh, Mason Mount, then even Usets and Hussein Awa. Awa can play centre mid though, so that might be a rotation option for them there. Uh, then on the left hand side would be Hill or Diop. Diop can play, well, in fact, they can both play right mid. Uh, both 86 rated, although they do have an 85 rated Viktor Sigankov to start on the right as well. Adiemi and myself would be the two strikers then at Borussia Dortmund. So a decent squad. Not much depth at left, at left back, but. Still a decent squad. What would like, the only thing that would make me wary about single left back, single full backs, as you're well aware from our time at Newcastle, we ended up occasionally with a bug in the game being switched to right back. Now, whether that would replicate itself at another club, I'm not sure. I don't think so, but something to bear in mind. 
That's Dortmund, your second option. Moving to country number three, as well as option number three. Option three is the biggest on the list with regards size of club and wage. Real Madrid. They were on the vote last year. You guys voted against coming here. Uh, I would be on £220,000 a week if I were to play for Real Madrid. They paid a similar sort of fee for me, I believe, as before. £123.4 million for Real Madrid. And the squad is as follows. I would be first slash second choice. Now, I could justify starting ahead again ahead of Karim Ediyemi. They do still have Christopher and Kunku here, and they play a 4-3-3 false nine. I could perhaps justify starting ahead of Christopher and Kunku. Maybe. It would be down to you. Or maybe Real Madrid is still that upper echelon of team that we can't yet justify until I may be 87 or 88 rated. It's up to you. The squad is still very, very strong here, though. Rafael Leal still here, as you see. I mean, they're still at 86 rated by, time, by the time you get to the bottom of that first list. There are a couple of, not issues, but concerns with the squad. Courtois in goal, absolutely fine. 35 years old, but 91 rated. Left back is weak. Raquel May, 76. Marco John, 77. However... Luca Hernandez can play there, but that would leave them even weaker at centre-back. There's only four centre-backs. Marquinhos at 90, Marapanos 83, Luca Hernandez 86, and then Ishmael Hill at 74. Right-back, uh, they have a number of right-backs. 87-rated Hakimi would be first choice, rather understandably. And then there's Dodo and Montiel. Whether they could be played at left-back, we'd have to wait and see. Uh, Real Madrid play, as we say, the 4-3-3 with a false nine. So they play a CDM, which would be Sangare, with then central midfielders, presumably 82-rated, 36-year-old Thiago Alcantara, who's retiring at the end of this in-game season, and Federico Valverde, who's 90-rated. They could potentially also play James Madison midfield or Almada as well, or even Rainier, but I imagine... Uh, Almada would be played at wide and Madison might be one of the go-to centimetres. We'd have to wait and see. Maybe Madison would start ahead of Thiago. I'm not sure. On the left, Vinny. On the right, I don't know as they put Leao out there. They would probably more likely put someone like Rainier or Almada out there. Or maybe even Valverde. But you'd like to think that it would be Vinny left, Leao right or vice versa. But whether that would be done or not, I can't guarantee you. Christopher and Kunku as we say, is the strongest striking rival for us at Real Madrid. Other than that, there's no one else. So first slash second choice. It depends if whether you believe at this stage of our career we can justify starting ahead of an 89-rated Christopher Nkunku. Moving from Spain back to Germany. Intriguingly, a side that we know a little bit better than most of the others on the list. Rassenballsport Leipzig, Red Bull Leipzig, they knocked us out of the Europa League last year. and We commented at the time on how good their squad was. It is still pretty decent. They would be Champions League. They went on to win the Europa League last year as well as the Bundesliga. They were champions in the Bundesliga last year. They paid £117.5 million for me. They, however, in Germany, similarly to Dortmund, would give me a wage cut to £87,000 a week if wages are something that you're worried about. With regards to the squad, uh, definitely starting striker. They play a 4 triple 2 So I would be up top alongside Joao Pedro, more than likely. Potentially Rafa Mia. With regards to squad depth, some really strong players at this club, as we, we're well aware from our games against them in the Europa League last year. In goal, still 86-rated Unai Simon. Left back, they have 87, sorry, 85 rated David Raum and Angelino. At right back, their only right back, Jeremy Frimpong at 86. Although they do have uh, Callum Hudson Adoy, who can play at right wing back, and that's perhaps to be mentioned. Centre back, they only have three Christensen, 86, Milenkovic, 85, and Tomori, 90. So still pretty damn strong. 
My brain is telling me they played five back against me last year, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I might be mistaken there. Uh, Sam Maximan is a go-to potentially for one of the forward midfield positions, the left mid. They have Carrasco as well. With regards to central midfield, it's 89-rated Suomeni, 85-rated Fagioli, and 84-rated Rodrigo de Paul. As we mentioned, they play a 4 triple 2 we believe. So, strength there. Kalamatsu Nadoi, 84-rated, can play at right wing-back. Then, further forward, they do still have an 87-rated uh, Piotr Zielinski and an 87-rated Dominic Zoboslai to play in the forward attacking midfield roles, or potentially... Uh, Martin Terrier is 84 rated. Neymar's just not good enough anymore, unfortunately. And uh, Terrier can play at striker, so could be utilised up top alongside me. Would actually rival Joao Pedro as a striking option. Joao Pedro could also potentially be used on the left-hand side of the second two, the middle two. Although I believe they're down as cams, not left mid, right mid, or left wing, right wing. But Leipzig with a strong squad, and they are Bundesliga champions from last season. Champions League four triple two. First choice. Now, we went England, Germany, Spain. Back to Germany. Now back to England again. Now, this one is more left field. It's probably, almost certainly, only on the list because of the size of the club as opposed to where they are within the save. Liverpool are, A, paying £123.4 million for me. B, they'd give me £170,000 a week. But C... They are playing Conference League football. Liverpool are in the third tier of European football. They play a 4-3-3 and I would be first slash second choice. Again, it's a decision as to whether you think I could justifiably start ahead of an 89 rated striking rival. Nunez 89, myself 85. They do have a decently strength squad in some areas, but they are weak in others. 90 rated Allison is fine. Only uh, 65 rated Adam Lewis at left back, who, note, is transfer listed as well. At centre back, there is 89 rated Pau Torres and not much else. Esteve, Arroyo, the only other go tos. At right back, Trent is still here, other than that, Cartenson, and then not much else either. In central midfield, no CDMs, one centre mid in Naby Keita. Baumgartner is here as a cam, and they also have Lucas Piquetta as a cam, who can play at centre mid. So there are some higher rated players, but it's mainly in the forward areas that they are better. 87 rated Luis Diaz would start on the left. 85 rated Rafinha might start on the right, but you would imagine Salah Regen Gamal Abdullah would be the man to start on the right hand side. And then it's a case of whether you do or don't think I should start or could start ahead of Darwin Nunez. Bit of a left field option this one. Wanted to put them on the vote because of the size of club, but you can see squad is and conference league football is so. They're there, but whether they, you vote for them or not, I am not sure. I'm trying not to give uh, a personal opinion, but I'm sure it's probably plain, clear to see why Liverpool are a left field option rather than a... Oh, look, Liverpool have bid for me. Up next, there are two other options. Inter Milan and then Manchester United. Both in different situations, though. Inter Milan have paid... £123.4 million pounds me. My only option from Italy. They would give me a pay cut uh, down to £87,000 a week at Inter Milan, which is a surprise. Now, Inter squad is strong. They play a 3-1-4-2. So, two strikers, meaning I would probably be first choice to start alongside 90-rated Lautaro Martinez. Probably ahead of an ageing Harry Kane and battling with Josip Brekolo for that second starting spot. But the squad is also good here at Inter, as you can see there. Now, they are in the Europa League. So, Inter Milan, Europa League. But bear in mind, they play a 3-1-4-2. So, the lack of depth at fullback isn't necessarily an issue here. Onana, 85 rated in goal. DeMarco can actually play at centre-back, 83 rated. Ben White at 86, Millie Tau at 89, and Timber at 88 would form a solid central defensive trio. 
Dumfries can also play at right wing back and right mid. He's 84 rated. Now, other options on the other side of the midfield would include an 88 rated Malero, an 83 rated Puado, and a 73 rated Gunter, who would probably start on the right, unfortunately, although there is an uh, 86 rated Harvey Elliott who could start on the right. A Hatterin could also maybe start on the right. Erdegaard would be in the middle, you would imagine, alongside Nicolo Barela and Hakan Jalanolu, potentially. There is no CDM, even though they play a 3 1 4 2. So, who would play in that CDM role? I'm not entirely sure. Then, obviously, you know the striking situation myself, Latero Martinez, Brecolo, and Harry Kane. I'd class myself as second choice there, but. That would be second choice as in Lautaro is ahead of me and I'd start alongside him. I'd potentially be second choice in terms of out of the first team if you think Harry Kane would start ahead of me. But as he's ageing with my goal scoring record and potential, I think we can justify being in the starting lineup there. Inter Milan is a strong option, but Europa League only if that's an issue for you. Our final option then, as you saw a moment ago, and as I... Uh, hinted at is Manchester United moving back to England for our final option Manchester United are Champions League our only Champions League option from the Premier League options they would pay 123.4 million pounds for me they would be paying me the second highest on the list at 180,000 pounds that's behind the 220 at Real Madrid I believe I would be first choice at Manchester United as well as I'm level with Alexander Isak at 85 rated. They do have decent strength in the squad that they have available to them. There are a couple of areas of question, however. David De Gea and Gallardo are both 86 rated. Whoever starts out of them is not a problem. They also have a 36-year-old 83 rated Bono as well. At left back, Kieran Tini, they play a 4-2-3-1. So they've 85 rated Kieran Tierney and 86 rated Andy Robertson. So strength at left back. However, at centre back, they don't have strength. 83 Strauch, 82 Chaloba are the two only half decent centre backs that would be at the club. Then 86 rated Masrawi as a right back. So defensively, centre back questionable, but obviously they could still sign someone later on in the window. In the midfield, the 4 2 3 1 would probably be McTominay or Kone and Nunes. They also have an 85 rated Ugarte as well, so they are strong in central midfield. On the wing, on the left, they have Garnacho only. On the right, it's 88 rated Anthony or 85 rated Patrick Vimmer. And you'd like to hope that Vimmer would start on the left, but I imagine they'd put Garnacho there, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because he does have potential. But he's not as highly rated as some of his other teammates, including Ahmad Diallo. And then up top, well, at Cam, key to point out, one Cam. Andreas Sheldrup, one Cam. But again, Sheldrup probably has the potential to grow. And then up top would be myself, probably ahead of Alexander Isak, but there is option there to grow. So they are your options. To reiterate, Leicester City, Europa League, 4-1-4-1, first choice. Dortmund, Champions League. 4-2-3-1, first slash second choice. Real Madrid, Champions League. 4-3-3, false nine. First, although probably second choice. Leipzig, Champions League. 4-2-2, first choice. Y Liverpool, 4-3-3, UEFA Europa Conference League. First slash second choice. Inter Milan, Europa League, 3-1-4-2, starting 11. Manchester United, Champions League, 4-2-3-1, first choice. The decision is yours. Vote for as many as you would like to see me play at. And we will continue on at that new club in probably a couple of days' time. Once you guys have had the opportunity to see the vote, vote on the vote, and I've had the chance to make the thumbnail. So... There might not be a, a my play video for a couple of days, but they are your options. Please do go and have your vote on the link in the description down below, and we will see where we'll be in season number six. Thank you for your continued support in this save. Do drop the video a like if you're looking forward to next season. Let me know in the comments section where you voted, 
and I'll see you in the next one in a new year at a new club.